Believe it or not, listeners, uh, we've made it to 200 episodes. Holy crap. 200. Oh, it took us over five years, but we did it. <laughs> five years to take it to 200. I never, at any point early on during this podcast, I never thought we'd get to 200. I never thought that would happen. And yet, here we are. 200 episodes. 200 episodes. And we still are guaranteed at least another 50 I yeah. know that just by looking into the future about the MLP and everything, we're at least going to get another 50 for sure, if not more. Yeah, we still don't have an, a clear end in sight. And, and that's the crazy part is, yeah, I thought for sure we'd be, this this would all be running out of steam before I even hit 150. <laughs> and yet we just keep on going. Yeah. So 200 episodes. 200. And it's going to be extra special this uh, week, so uh, let's go. Again, hi, it's Pony Four and One. Again, episode two hundred. I'm Nemesis, and joining me is Alcatraz, as always. As always, two hundred episodes, and this one is going to be extra long for multiple reasons. It's you know, it's a big milestone for us, but we've also got, of course, news as usual. We got a comic to talk about, a brand new Friendship is Magic series. We've got, of course, Once Upon a Zeppelin, and at the very end, we have a movie. To talk about, we could go very long into that. Yes. And of course, fan content, but before the movie. Yeah. We're going to do fan content before that for spoiler reasons. Yes, reasons for that. We probably got to go ahead and just uh, get started because <laughs> when do we, we do, do anything else but just get started? Yeah, get started. The news. If you want to follow along with it, go to ponyfarm1.libsyn.com slash show notes. Again, it's spelled L I B S Y N. All the links are there. So let's go ahead and get started. Convention news, Sea Bronies has announced Nicole Oliver for their May 2018 cruise plus four new sponsor tiers. And Everfree Northwest has put up their 2018 site. Yep. It's a bit of an improvement over the old one. A little bit of an improvement, yep. And Phantom News, Two Snacks has released an update video regarding his next two Best Sisters Play videos. He's, they're going to be smaller scale than the Fallout 4 one. <laughs> Yeah, that was a long one. But apparently the next one will be releasing by the end of October. And then the next one probably in December. So hooray. And uh, based off some of the stuff he was showing, I suspect I know which uh, Best Friends episode he's going to use for it. And it's going to be fun. Oh boy. Star for Light devs have posted some concept art and other updates for their game. If you remember, this is the uh, very limbo looking game. It's not Limbo. I know they Obviously. specifically said it's not Limbo, but it's a very interesting concept art. And um, I'm trying to remember what the other stuff was. I believe they're looking for. Uh, I think the, yeah, they're looking for uh, animators. An animator. Um, they have a monthly journal and Patreon changes and Discord server. Yeah, all that stuff. Fun stuff. And here's an interesting thing. Uh, DHX yeah. Media is apparently putting itself for, up for sale or possibly a merger. Yeah, that is definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this has been a thing for a while. They've been looking for a way to do this stuff. Um, let's see. I mean, yeah, they've been... It's kind of weird because uh, it's like I didn't realize they were trying to do this for a while. But um, we don't know how this is going to affect MLP at all. Hopefully, it won't affect it at all. I mean, it's one of their... If one of, if not the biggest thing that they have. But it's also licensed to them. Yeah, it's not owned by DHX. It's owned by Hasbro. Mm -hmm. So it's possible Hasbro just say, okay, fine, and then just pull out and just give it to Boulder. It could be. Or a, they could leave it with whoever gets DHX if they're still yeah, doing animation. It depends on a lot of things. Yeah, so it's really hard to say what's going on. Has the ponies ain't going anywhere because of this. That's not something we really have to worry about. They're not going to let their biggest 
thing go uh, one of one of their biggest things just disappear unless they have to doubt that's going to be the case i'm pretty it, sure they have other it depends, options again like i said it depends on who buys them or merges with them it could be hasbro doesn't want to work with them for whatever reason it could be a lot of things yeah anyway. so we'll see what the future holds yeah. Merchandise news, though. Baby Hippogriff na- toy named Flutter Cloud has been spotted, but this one is completely different from a previous Flutter Cloud spotted. That was also a baby hippogriff. We just have multiple baby hippogriffs named the same thing. Sure. This is not confusing at all. It's fine. This is fine. A Finnish site lists lists some bl- new blind bag toy sets and the new Equestria Girls dolls, which appear to be slightly different from the initial reveal. Mostly in clothing, but not anything else. Right, yeah. Trying. Yeah, so little blind bag toy sets. It's like it's just the blind bags, but with some extra accessories, so it's just interesting. Eh, they're kind of neat. Yeah. The Game Loft MLP game has received another movie-themed update. Yep, not much, really much more to say about that. I haven't touched the Game Loft game in so long now. Yeah. But yeah, I just added more stuff from the movie. And Facebook has released a Tempest Shadow camera effect. So you can be an edgelord, too. Right, sure. Do that. And Ponyville Mysteries, Riddle of the Rusty Horseshoe is out. Where's my rusty horseshoe? Yep, yep, that thing. In comic news, iTunes has a preview for Legends of Magic number seven. That's coming soon, and we got a big teaser for it at the end of the uh, last issue. Yes, we did. And Quester Girls news, Shake Things Up is now on YouTube. That is the Applejack uh, Shake short, which makes a bunch of smoothies, I guess. Yes. Smoothies, sure. shakes, close enough. Whatever. Avengers Magic News. German Amazon may have released the release date for the movie on DVD. And it's March 18th, 2018. Yep, that's what they've shown. I don't know if that's like, is it Germany re- release? Yeah, but that's what we got right now. That's the only date that we've seen. And it lines up with what's normal for movies. So that's likely the, at least near the release date, if not the outright correct release date. Yeah, I'll just completely ignore the leak because <laughs> the movie got leaked. Yeah. <laughs> Uncommon Bond may be early airing early in Canada. Right, this bit again. Yes, um, we'll find out shortly, but uh, might not be uh irrelevant relevant soon. Um, we'll get to that in a bit. Animation World News has an article on the cinematography on the movie. It's actually, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you probably should check that out. This is not News Network, sorry. Animation News Network. Animation World World Network. Network. Yes. (laughs) We all screwed it up. Everything is wrong. But yeah, if you want to check that out, it's pretty interesting. Also, I believe there are a couple spoilers in there maybe, so uh, be careful, though. Yes, be careful. Mm. And various movie box office predictions are out, and the movie has taken roughly $3 million on Friday with another... uh, 290,000 on Thursday night. And we'll see how well it does yeah. through the rest of this weekend. Yeah, but uh, looking like it's going to make about 10 million or so on the first weekend, which is not too bad considering it's limited run compared to other movies. Yeah. But it did premiere at third place, it looks like, which not surprising Blade Runner taking number one. I mean, come I mean, on. Yeah, it's Blade Runner. Kind of sucks that we got put right up next to Blade Runner. Yeah, well, that's how it is. Yeah, such is life. It was either that or Thor. Remember, it was supposed to open neck on the first weekend of November. Yeah, this is probably a better better time. And in case you were doubting, the movie has been confirmed to be take place between season seven and eight. Yes. It was kind of, I suspected as much, but there you go. Anyway, final bit of news. Uh, appears the rest of season seven has leaked out. Yep. So watch it. So watch out. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we were saying the Uncommon Bond thing may be irrelevant, because it's out there already. Yeah, if you know where to look, and we're not going to directly no, we're link them. Anyway. We're not going to... But uh, yeah, they're out there, so watch out for spoilers for the rest of the season. Yeah, they're going to get rampant. Because, mm-hmm. well, we're all impatient. Yeah. But, as is our normal procedure, we won't talk about them until the normal release okay. date. Yep. Which won't be too long, because that's over the course of this month anyway. Yeah, we're getting near the end of the season anyway. We're fine. So, uh, that's the news. Not as much as you said there was. Yeah, you said it was a big lot. Th- okay, fine. It wasn't There's a lot. big news. It was a decent amount. Or maybe it's just I go faster than you do. No, I mean, there was only a page and a half. Not even a... Yeah. 
I remember back when in the I day, say there's hey, a lot. We have like the time I had three pages. I just of remember news. back in the day there was literally like five news links and that was it. Oh, back in my day, I remember when the draw friends on Request for Your Daily were about five. five yeah, I remember that too. too. I remember that because we we're old geezers. I remember when I could go back through Request for Your Daily's entire archive in a single day. Yep. You can't do that uh, anymore. No, you can't. Well, you probably could. You just have to, well, click through. You'd have not to read start anything. at midnight and never eat or do anything else. And not really actually read anything. That's it for the news. And moving on, though, we got, well, comic. Friendship's Magic number 59 came out. And this one is, uh, let's see, written by Christina Rice, act by Agnes Gaboska, and colors by Heather Beckel. And I think it's actually a bit of a spoiler for Secrets and Pies, oddly enough. Yeah. I think this takes place after that episode, so a kind of bad timing for this comic to come out. Yeah. Although some of us, it won't even be relevant whether or not it spoils that episode. But, um, <laughs> well, Pinky tries to get, basically, Pinky tries to get Dash to like pie. And Dash is annoyed by it. That's basically the issue. Yep. Hey, what do you know? That's real fast. It's a, yeah, uh, Agnes Gorboska does a lot of great artwork again. Lots of, like, fun little faces there, too. Pretty good from Pinky, because, well, yeah. That's what you do with Pinky. You stretch her out and squish her because she's cartoony. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, but it's kind of a fun issue, but not a particularly, um, great issue. It's fun. There's not a huge amount of meat to it, though. Yeah, it's mostly pie. <laughs> right, and they never did get into the savories. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh it's a fun issue just it's just nothing really huge to it It might be a nice companion to the uh episode about the same con- to- um, topic but uh beyond that yeah there's not really a whole lot to talk about it's, it's kind of a fluff thing really yeah it's not bad i didn't think it was bad at all it's just no it's not bad not a huge amount of meat to it yeah and not the pie thing you can have yeah, meat but and pies. stacks and stacks and pies though Yes. <laughs> I did like the bit where it's just, AJ's just like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> nope, I'm hey, out. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> don't leave me with her. Yeah, it, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Um, it, yeah, I guess it might be worth the $4, but. It's not, fine. Barely worth the $4, I should say. That's probably a good way to put it. Barely worth it. But it is worth it. It's worth it, but not, not super worth it. Don't go crazy trying to find it. Just if you do find it or you have it already ordered, you'll be fine. But otherwise, it's just it's pretty uh, basic, all things considered. So uh, that's the comic. That's the comic. So now we move on to Once Upon a Zeppelin. This is a quick synopsis. Twice doing some prison duties and she kind of is bored and kind of overwhelmed. And then turns out, oh, hey, your family wants us to want a vacation on a cruise and they're invited her. But so she goes, right? She goes and there they are. She has a she wants to plan out everything for them so they're all having fun and then huh, everyone's acting weird and they keep acting uh giving out uh weird information about her over the announcements stuff, right? Hmm, mm. interesting. And then it turns out she goes to confront this announcement person, like, what the heck is going on? And then it's Iron Will. Oh no. Yes, and it turns out he uh sold this cruise as a uh cruise with a princess type princesses type thing with uh Twilight and Cadence. And apparently that was part of the contract that her parents signed without reading. And so Twilight is kind of annoyed by this and decides to compromise in that she'll do all the princessy stuff if her family can do their things. And, well, turn out uh, Twilight's not really enjoying it, including the fact that uh, a fan won a prize of spending the day with her. A fan who uh, doesn't know the concept of personal space. But, uh... Yeah, so she's doing all these things with as a princess and not really enjoying her family's kind of noticing and trying to get her to, you know, do stuff. And then finally Twilight gets really upset because she misses a big event she wanted to see and then she explodes at everyone and Cadence gives her a talking, talks to her a bit and Twilight kind of apologizes and Iron Will abandons ship after he gets caught and uh, that's it, more or less. More or less. I really enjoy this episode a lot, quite frankly. I, I expected you to. Well, yeah, uh, I got a lot of things I wanted out of this episode, quite, fr- quite frankly, so... Yeah, it's a it's a it's a really fun episode. I think I thought it was fairly enjoyable. It, it was good. It was a good episode. It, it, it's it's not like you know some other ones, but it's it's really good. Yeah, it's a Twilight episode, so you have to like it. You're biased to like it, so of course you liked it. Yeah, 
It's but it was a good episode. Get a lot of Twilight episodes yes, anymore. We don't, and it is nice to see Twilight get an episode. Yes, it's where very it's nice. not. Well, uh, I would say, you know, because we get this all oh, Twilight's a princess now, so she has to be like a princess. It's kind of what this episode is, but in a different way. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's an interesting take on that sort of thing. It was written by Brittany Flores, a new writer, I believe. I, she hasn't written anything this season. I don't see her name on any other season. So, yeah, she's a brand new writer. Yay, new writers. Mm. Doing well. Yeah, she did a very good job, I think. I really liked a lot about... Um, big thing about this... Um, yeah, this addresses, I guess, uh, I guess some stuff about Ty's princessiness. She does have official duties. Yes, the official duties like the beginning. She's got like a gigantic stack of paperwork that she's signing. The whatnot. worst part of being official anything. Mm-hmm. Paperwork. And first, she's just going to skip this vacation with her family because, well, she's got work to do. And Spike convinces her uh, to do otherwise. It's like, I'll take care of it. Go. Yeah. And uh, at first, she's resisted because, well, I can't just go without you. It just makes sense. you're a family, too. And then he's like, no, 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 I can do this. And it's like, oh, good. I'm like, for once, that's one. Boom. Get Spike out of the way quickly. Spike did something good. Also get Spike out of the way, which is good because often anymore, it's like you get Twilight. It means you get Spike automatically. So he's out of the way pretty quickly, which is yay. Um, we get Twilight's family, not just, oh, not just Shining and Cadence, but her parents are there, which is great because we finally get to see them more fleshed out. That's been something I've been really wanting. We finally got it. Yes. More of Twilight's family. We've Mm -hmm. always wanted more family stuff. Yep. And we got it. And so literally the only parents, actually, I think that's pretty much everyone now. Yeah, I mean, here we got more of Twilight's parents. We now, yeah, we now have we at least we now have basic dedicated. personalities for pretty much all the parents. Yeah, they'd hit them all finally. Yeah, even the dead ones. Yeah, even the dead ones. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big thing for me. Was I've been wanting that sort of thing for a long time, and this finally delivered on it after many years. Yep, because <laughs> we saw them first way back in Cutie Mark Chronicles back in season one. That was the first time we ever saw them. The first time they spoke was in season six, and they finally are here. Although, speaking of things like that, they have different voices this time. Yes. That was kind of a weird thing, Um, because I know in the season six premiere, they're voiced by uh, Tara Strong and Andrew Francis, and this time it was, uh, let's see, Patricia Patricia Drake did uh, Twilight Velvet, and they addressed her as Twilight Velvet here. And Charlie Demers as Nightlight. So, yes, those names are official. Those are official names. Hooray! Twilight and Twilight Velvet. Twilight Velvet Nightlight, yeah. Yeah, so those two did those voices. Um, Zach LeBlanc is back. Yeah, Zach LeBlanc was back at Star Trek, the f- creepy fan who won the grand prize. He was unintentionally creepy. Yeah. It's one of those, he wasn't trying to be creepy, he's just super nervous. Yeah, and Trevor Duvall reprising his role as uh, Iron Will. Yep. Yeah, that was the thing was, yeah, she didn't know what the prize was. She just like she just thought she's there to draw the prize. No, you are the prize. You are the prize. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. So the guy was uh, didn't understand the concept of co- personal space. Yeah. Like particularly during the bingo game. Jeez. Yeah. Was, uh, man, I, he is fast. I, I did like that. That was really nice. Um, nice camera work there with the uh, real super close ups, just to emphasize just how disturbingly close he is. Speaking right into the ears. Yep. Right into making her uh, back up. Of course, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, he just came to the, uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it it's a bit interesting, this whole episode, it it, it kind of showed, like, what it's like the to dark be a guest. dark side of fame. Uh, like a guest of honor at a convention. The dark side of it, anyway. Yeah, the, dark, well, the, the bad things. Although, let's be honest, with a convention, you know exactly what you're getting to. You know, it's not like they trick you into showing up. <laughs> like they trick you. Yeah, it's one of those, there's a contract that's completely filled out that people and actually read. Yeah. <laughs> before if they someone offers it. you a freaky vacation, why would you question it? Well... Here's an example. Nothing comes for free. Yeah. I mean, we've all gotten those free offers for stuff in the mail or email or whatever. Free if you do this. What a free oh. iPod. If you sign your soul away, it's yeah. fine. But yeah, yeah. So it's kind of yeah. So it's it's kind of interesting. The parents just kind of they just get a vacation. They won a contest. They don't remember entering, which is a uh, <laughs> that's a little worrisome. There. That's a uh, red flag number one, and then two, they just got a contract, which is red flag number two, and three, they didn't read the contract. Yeah, always read the contract. Always read the fine print. Who reads the fine print? Well, your daughter does. <laughs> She'll read it three times. At yeah. least. 
So yeah, it was it's interesting is also the parents' is, uh, the parents' personalities. Not quite, I think, what a lot of fan people were hoping for, I think. I had no expectations. Yeah, I, I've one. seen some uh, <laughs> establishments of uh, Velvet's personality specifically. Um, kind of, I know a lot of people go with the kind of the really wants to be a grandmother type person. Oh, yeah. Why aren't you married yet? Where's your children? Huh? I want grandbabies to spoil. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this is, she's very adventurous, apparently. She likes doing stuff like going over a waterfall, waterfall in a barrel. In a barrel. <laughs> Whereas her dad likes things like bingo because they're nice and organized in little boxes. It's like, well, we know where they try to get that. That's her organization. We know that part. So that's uh, that was interesting seeing that. Um, it's nice to get their personalities now. Yes. The nightlight just kind of goes along with his wife's <laughs> wild hairs, I guess. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's also nice to kind of the. The bit after she came out of the barrel. It's kind of, aw. Aw. Because yeah, Nightlight just kissed Twilight the and It's like, aw. Aw. That's so cute. <laughs> also, like how, uh, you know, uh, Shining Armor uh, getting airsick. How do you <laughs> get airsick? He's a big baby. <laughs> He's a big baby. I don't get airsick. He gets airsick. Constantly. <laughs> I'm, this is not because, I'm not leaving because I'm airsick. Oh, <laughs> I can't be airsick. I'm in the water. They cancel out. I don't think it works like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I love that. Just he's trying so hard, and of course, even Kane is being kind of understanding and stroking his ego. It's like, <laughs> yeah, see, I don't think I think Flurry Hearts getting airsick. Could you take her down below? Because I know you don't get airsick. <laughs> it's like, uh, give him the opening, give so it. he can take it without without <laughs> without ruining his ego. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, also it's again Ironwell though. Kinda I I I kind of I was glad Ironwell came back. Like you hear his voice like oh, That's Ironwell. Yeah, we haven't seen him since season two. Yeah. Uh so it's nice to see him back because uh he's a fun character, I think. Yep. So, he, yeah, he he's was, just, he was a lot of fun. Although those does does cancel out some of the comic stuff he appeared in. Oops. Oops. Yeah, I just I do like it that he is just straight up just a really good He's almost a almost not a con, con artist, artist but not quite. He's everything he's doing is technically legal. Yeah, it is legal. He's just really good. Uh, I guess an uh, entrepreneur with loose morals. <laughs> he he'd be really good at selling used cars. <laughs> yeah, he'd be. Yeah, that's what he would be. But yeah, it's just I just like it just because his whole thing is just yeah. It just I just love everything about. It. He's just selling everything. Um, I also like his exit. <laughs> that was just, the best. Nope. Off the edge. He just jumps off the edge. No refunds. <laughs> I love that. That was the, one of the best parts of the episode. Just, <gasps> nope. I'm out. <laughs> but then, of course, you just, fly, just parachute with him in a pile of money. Yep. Who do you think you are? Scrooge McDuck? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> What's <a> McDuck? <gasps> that was that was uh, that was great. Just seeing him again. I guess not reformed really. He wasn't ever really bad. He's just kind of... <laughs> he's an antagonist, but he's not evil. Yeah. Chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, chaotic neutral. Well, technically so is Discord. Yeah. Now he is. Oh, yeah. you, could, you could possibly argue he's now becoming chaotic good slowly. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think he was ever evil. He was just... Chaos. He Although was... he could take a lot of... Uh, interest in some of the malice part, but anyway, that's a different discussion. Entirely. Yeah, that's a different discussion. Nothing to do with this episode because Discord didn't appear. Thankfully, because you know, he, at one point he would have tried to ruin this for Twilight just because it would be funny. It would have been funny. Yeah, it's also yeah. So it's nice uh, they found a way to remove Starlight I, or not Starlight. Well, she wasn't there. <laughs> it was nice to we found a way to remove Spike pretty quickly, but also make him useful. Yeah. So I didn't have to have uh, Spike again. <laughs> And again, that's the kind of the problem. If your favorite pony is Twilight, but your fa- one of your least favorite characters is a Spike, that's a problem sometimes. Because <laughs> they're often pushed together, always. Well, they've always been together. Yeah. Spike's part of the family. Have to have her assistant. And also, this Twilight made that giant chart, and everyone's like, yeah, because she made a real good chart based off really what everyone wanted. Chart. Yep. Like, and Shining, like, Shining likes tiny, tiny things. He likes tiny things. Racing tiny boats. And yes, <laughs> tiny things, jokes. Ha ha. Yes. yes. Get your jokes out. <laughs> yeah. So, it's it's pretty fun. that And also the, the, uh, the, I guess, the baby thing. Everyone's, like, literally rubbing up their babies against Flurry. Make a princess friend. 
Yeah. Oh, earlier, everyone was fine flooring and using the babies as building blocks. That was great. <laughs> what the heck? Jim Flurry is stacking baby. This is why Flurry is not a great as an aliquot, I'm just saying. Just she gets away with too much. It was funny though. Yeah, it was. It was funny. Although it was well, some of the stuff there's the, the wrong facts about uh Twilight and stuff at the beginning <laughs> and <laughs> Cadence. What was it? About uh the Princess uh, saved her baby Spike from a fire monster. Or something. Yes, something, something like, like that. It's that like, doesn't even make sense. <laughs> the one before that was great, though. It's like this is where her um, Twilight Shiny were born, were born. Were born, and they all look it's like that no, and it's like that. Parents. Parents. That's how we were born. Yeah, the parents like, but you were there. You, you were there. At least I hope you were there. <laughs> Just, oh, we know, but it is a really nice tree. It is a really nice tree. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know that tree. <laughs> no, you don't. Black it's shine. Up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was... That was... And also, it's an interesting airship because uh, the, the weird the way the, the, the flipper it, things... It propelled itself with flap... W- with flippers. That was okay. weird. Sure. They called it a Zeppelin, and it's not a Zeppelin. Don't get into semantics. Shut up. Well, multiple No, things. shut up. No, <laughs> shut up. Nope. Nope. It wasn't anything like it. There was a boat suspended from it's a balloon. It's a different universe. Obviously, Zeppelins are different there. Zeppelin's a brand! Obviously, there, Zeppelins are not a brand. Zeppelin is a brand. Or that brand is a brand. Name. It's a company. Or it is a company that made armored blimps. Or maybe that in that universe, Zeppelin's are, Zeppelin is a brand that's totally different from the one here. You ever think of that? No, you didn't. I did. I just wanted, didn't want to accept it. We'll accept it. Accept the fate. If I have to accept that, then you have to accept other things. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Totally yes. different thing. It is cool. I, I I did like seeing more airship stuff. I really like airships. Yeah, it's interesting how airships are a big thing right now. Yes, airships kind In of a Justin's big thing. Franchise. Considering uh, what we talk, yeah. what we'll be talking about in, later on. But yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was pretty cool. And yes, oh. Star Tracker. Oh, yeah, so the goat was there again. Oh, yes, the goat. The goat assistant. And he ate a pineapple. Just bit right into it. Just like, like Luna. Luna. <laughs> is Luna part goat? <laughs> How was that for some fanfic fodder? I love the crunch. <laughs> yeah, you see, you, um, there was also the uh, thing that Twilight wanted to see. Luna Bay. Yep, at Luna Bay. At Luna Bay. Yep. Thing at Luna Bay, the, which uh, is listed on the big map. Big that event we have. with this, the shooting stars and the sunset and everything. The northern stars, not the northern lights, the yeah. northern stars. The northern stars shooting. It looks like the stars are shooting out at the sunset. Yeah. Which is interesting how that one works. Yeah. How does that work? It's like Luna raises the sun, but fan fiction always tends to make, you know, Luna make, doing this. Luna raises the sun? Sorry. Luna raises the moon, but fanfics tend to, you know, have her paint the stars as well. Well, that's fanfics. Don't. I know. It's like. How does that work? Well, but that's you know that's that's a can of worms. Celestia raises the sun. What about all the other stars in the yeah? It's galaxy? A kind of interesting. also one thing that was actually nice was um Twilight was you know she does this a lot where she sacrifices herself for the sake of other people's happiness. She does that a lot, and this is and another this is case. another thing. This is a case where she kind of goes to a point of she really missed something she really wanted to see, and she got pretty upset over it. And then she yeah lashed out, not surprisingly, because well she's spoiling point. And she even stepped on a star. What's his face? Star Tracker. Yeah, Star Tracker's a hoof. Looks almost like she broke it, but whatever. Yeah, I almost feel bad for Star Tracker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was standing too close. He was be kind kind of creepy with that. But he's like the stereotypical nervous fan. Yeah. At the same time, though, there comes a point where it's like. Yeah, I mean, there's some etiquette that you should probably watch in that case that you wasn't. No, he but wasn't. it's not like he was, you know, trying He's to being, be creepy. Yeah, well, he, he was, was just being creepy. There comes a point where, though, I, I would say that just because you're not trying to be creepy doesn't just. Well, it really doesn't mean he wasn't, behavior. but it's like I just say he doesn't uh, really excuse behavior. That's why I behavior. said I almost feel sorry. In which way, I almost, almost feel like they should just toss him overboard. <sighs> That's go. a little bit too much. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way: if you want to. 
day at a convention with Tara Strong, what would you do? Hover hands all day. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be creepy because no, you don't when, know what to do. The yes. hover hands kind of creepy. <laughs> it's not all day. You know, that's what you do when they take a picture together. Hover hand because you don't actually touch. Yeah. But, I mean, how would you react to you get to spend the day with Tara Strong? Imagine. Honestly? The way I would, if I would be nervous, the thing is, I'd be nervous like if I'm five feet away at all times. That's how I am. But you'd still be really freaking nervous and anxious I'd be and nervous, really but I wouldn't be creepy nervous. When yeah, I get nervous, I don't. Differently. Get, I don't, because partially just because, well, I'm pr- really bad about personal space. So I don't really like it when people get close. Yeah, so I, did, I So I wouldn't do it close to someone like that either. Yeah, same here. I personal space is a big thing, but. <laughs> It's one of those kind of put yourself in their shoes and you can start to see why they act like that. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not creepy, but you can kind of see why. Yeah. <laughs> no, stay away from my waifu. <laughs> stay away from Sunset's waifu. <laughs> and yours. Sunset's waifu. I harbor no delusions. <laughs> but it was also kind of a... My 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 solution to seeing the uh, missing the uh, event the celestial event, time travel. You know time travel. Yes, but time travel is problematic. Only if you let it be problematic. Or you uh, do. Every case they've used it, it's never turned out quite the best. Well, those are very. <laughs> Besides, that remember the spell that lets her temporarily go back in time only used once, and she already used it. She can't use it again. It's been modified though. Starlight modified it. Yeah, and you see how bad that went. <laughs> you know, all she has to do is go to like a place on Luna Bay, or it's all isolated. Just look at it, and no case. <laughs> no, you really want to get into paradox theory? No. Butterfly effect. You say it's isolated, but <laughs> it wouldn't really affect things. You say that you're trying to make things worse than they couldn't can, can because be. every time someone says well, it doesn't won't have work, to be it every always time. does. It doesn't have to be every time. It doesn't it have doesn't to, but every since time. when has it not? <laughs> Your favorite tr- movie trilogy is about it going wrong. <laughs> but then correcting it. But it still went wrong. Yeah. So? <laughs> and then they corrected it, and it didn't quite go co- well, and they had to do it again. So? Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean you stop just because it went wrong once. Keep trying to get it right. <laughs> or you destroy the time I wanted to. Or you end up, you know, learning the Becoming war games your own lesson. Grandfather. You end up learning the war games lesson. Just don't start. Or you just become your own grandfather. Whatever. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> What's that? That's Futurama, though. No. That's where it was. Futurama is where everything, everything went exactly as it needed to because of time travel. Probably had to become his own grandfather because that's why he's altered his brainwaves so he wasn't affected by these invaded aliens when they came in and therefore he was immune to their effect. He was immune to their effects and thus he was able to save the planet because of his messed up brainwaves because he's his own grandfather. There. So you want Twilight to become her own no. grandmother? <laughs> no. I'm just saying I just wanted to be able to see the celestial event. And I'm pretty sure it would go fine. But you're convinced somehow it won't. <laughs> just saying, time travel's not the solution to everything. Well, it could be a solution this time. Or there's a rewind spell, because it was very recent. Rewind! <laughs> rewind. You know, then we have a Max and Chloe situation. Do you really want that? <laughs> no one has to die. <laughs> You're not trying to prevent someone's death. You're just trying to see a celestial event. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this with the sea, the, the little boat race itself i remembered it this now it was shining in a i was going to shining in twilight and then while well, shining in twilight <laughs> <laughs> yeah and wow twilight Vell was really ecstatic about that Woo, let's go Woo! it was fun it was fun fun yep that was because you know twilight velvet is adventure adventures hmm 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 her and dash would get along Turns out they're kind of interrelated. No, Twilight Ash is no, dead. No, they're not related. They're distant cousins. Oh no! Nope. It's just like Pinky and Applejack. Nope, that's not even confirmed. Besides, that hasn't stopped the shippers. <laughs> well, the, the apple pie was never particularly proper to begin with. <laughs> True, but yeah, who knows if 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 Twilight got her organizational side from her dad? Yeah, 
She might get a little bit of the adventurous side from her mother. Though she doesn't express much adventurous side. No, not really. I don't know. She might find it with her. She does her. occasionally. Mm, especially when Dash it's like helps. she went off the schedule. <gasps> oh, no. That did happen. She went Everyone off the guessed. schedule. And they got ice cream. <laughs> no, that was kind of funny. We've got to do something off the schedule and all of her family gasps in the Star Tracker. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? There's also just the crazy the fans with like the wigs or and fake wing wigs and fake wings and t-shirts and stuff and so just like a convention <laughs> royal grandparents <laughs> yeah because technically they are grandparents they yeah well not te- Twilight velvet did get her, her yeah grandkid. one grandbaby but now the other kid has to get one <laughs> at least that's if you go by fan uh, works but that seems to be dead your fan inversion the parents are dead as dead as Applejack's actual parents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. All right, so yeah, that's all the parents, though, which is great. Yep. They're all fleshed out in some way or shape or form. Anyway, this episode, it was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed this one. This is probably one of my favorite episodes of the season. Not the best, obviously, but one of my favorites of the season for sure. Yeah. So for, far. For me, it's probably going to be like... Upper mid range. Right, sure. It was a good episode. All the Dash episodes are terrible. All of the Dash episodes. Well, then this one's apparently the worst, then, if you're going to no. say that. <laughs> but no, it, it, I did enjoy it. it. It was a good one. It's not a huge, other than the, the parent personality, wasn't a huge amount of meat to it. But. A lot of good moments in it. It did have a lot of good moments. Iron Will's the best. Iron Will was pretty cool. <laughs> no refunds. No refunds. Whee! Just like this hot podcast, no refunds. <laughs> Not like they paid to be here. Unless they did, which, why? This is a free podcast. There's nothing illegal about making them pay for it. (laughs) But we don't offer any paid methods, so if they paid for it, someone else is ripping them off. That you know of. I'm laundering all the money. Right. For the Transformers. I get some of that money laundering my direction. No. Anyway, yeah, great episode. I uh, really enjoyed it. It was nice to see Twilight in the leading role again and also getting her parents fleshed out and everything. So, yep, yep, yep. that's that for the episode. So we'll go ahead and move on to fan content, starting with, of course, music. Music, yes, music. I've got one song this week. Just came out, Hirosashi's Journey. Hiro Sashi hasn't put out a song in years and popped back up with this one. And it's it's pretty good. It's a really nice mashup of a whole bunch of show songs all put together with their own little bits that he tied it all together with. It goes from like the oldest to some of the newest songs, maybe even newest. It goes from Giggle at the Ghostly it's got in there, which is the first song. Right. To, I mean, it's even got We're, We're Not Flawless mixed in there as well. Little bits here and there of all the different stuff. Well, I wouldn't say it was in order, though. Oh, it's not in order. It doesn't go from oldest. Because, like, um, Cafeteria Song was very early in song. Yeah, I mean, it opens up with an Equestria Girls song. Yeah. So, yeah, and like I said, it's even got Equestria Girls stuff in there. It, I ah. think the mashup was really well done. Because uh, it's hard to take all those different kinds of songs and get them to work together. And I think they pulled them off. It's not super bouncy, but it's not, you know, Pretty happy, Calm. though. Yeah, it, it's happy. It's happy, it's mellow, and yeah, journey. It's basically yeah. this idea of the journey that we've taken. Yeah. And yeah I think I it, really it, it has that feeling to it. I really like the intro. It's really airy mm-hmm. and stuff. And also, yeah, the songs are really nicely blended together. It's, um, there's no real obvious, like, oh, jump. Yeah. Type stuff. I mean, it obviously goes between songs, but it's not like sudden it's and It's not weird. hard cuts between yeah. them or anything. They flow well together mixed. really well. Yep. That's what I got. One song. One song. 
Anyway, fanfix. I yes. guess. An oh, update. Man. First off, uh, Enchanting Kingdom did get a new chapter. It um, did. Twilight did not get sick, for sure. Definitely. Twilight definitely did not throw up. That did not happen. Nope, Shut up. It did not happen. Did not get sick. And she also did not, you know, scarf down an entire massive cake. <laughs> did not eat um, an entire... In an undignified manner. But yeah, I mean, it was just uh, more about that sort of stuff. And uh, kind of uh, clearly Rar uh, Rarities has um, some sort of issue that Twilight's trying to get at. Because it's clearly affecting Rarity. Yeah, they're... they're both have their thing have their things and oh, they're yeah, not Twilight telling definitely each other did not accidentally things. walk into a door either oh yes that didn't happen <laughs> yeah it's um you know there it's it's an early a chapter still so still kind of setting things up a bit but it does start really starting establishing some of the stuff that's probably going to start popping up in the future of the fic and really get the when the story gets really gets going it's like at that frustrate that frustrating stage that good frustrating where it's yeah. like i want to know <laughs> And also, uh, Rarity showed off an old picture that she drew of a princess bookie. Yes. <laughs> Aww. Yep. It's like, aw. Anyway, that's the updated um, thing. Uh, but um, featured fic, I have one. It's called The Worst of All Possible Worlds by the Time Sword. And it's a, well, alternate universe of sorts. Of sorts. Or sunset while well, in friendship games. Well, she decides to go ahead and go to a question to see what's up. Oh, dear. And this is, remember, this is when Twilight is fighting Starlight in time. Surprise! It doesn't go well for Sunset because uh, she winds up in the alternate worlds. Starts off, you know, with the... Uh, the the uh, Sombra's... Yeah, Sombra's world and then yeah, Crystal's the war. war. Yep. So it's basically Sunset goes in there and starts, well, fixing these things because, well, Twilight didn't have time to fix them because she had a villain to catch. To, yeah. So since it's kind of in the war there after Twilight shows up and she's trying to fix things and unite the elements and all that stuff and pretty interesting. It's also very long. It's also not done. At point this point there are two arcs out of it looks like um I'm not sure how many, but several not certain how like. many. At this point it's a whole, a whole over a hundred thousand words. I suspect they're at least going to at least three worlds, if not four or more. But it's pretty interesting because it's kind of still sunset. Kind of you see some parts of sunset with um. I guess that self doubt is still there, that I'm not really part of this, but I still feel responsible and have to fix things. Yeah, it is definitely an interesting take. Uh, it's interesting how they do th do things with with sunset. Also, how they do things with the main six, mm -hmm. yeah. the different versions of the main six. Yeah. Because you get to see like how they be, how without. they would be in all these situations, mm -hmm. these different situations, how they would be, how they would change, how they'd be different, that kind of thing. It's is definitely an interesting take, and I am enjoying it. Yeah, I just I've noticed this one. A lot. I've been keeping up with this one as it's been updating, and I'm just kind of all well, I wanted it to be more substantial before I featured it. And well, it's pretty substantial now, and they just wrapped up arc two, and they're moving on to arc three. And if if you didn't notice, arc one and two two kind of very similar in many ways. The author said that. From here on out, things are going to be quite different. Yes. Those will be interesting to see how things are different from here on out, too. Yep. Hopefully it doesn't get hit with the curse of, yeah. we Never featured it, now they featured won't it. update. Uh... Yeah, I also, I really do like the different yeah, the different ways they um, showed off the different, the main six and stuff, like how, yeah, well, this is, well, random unicorn just shows up and says... <laughs> That you're the elements of harmony. Who are you? Oh, I'm Suns. And then, yeah, the, even like the bits where, you know, Sunset winds up interacting with a different version of Celestia and having to, like, yeah, I'm not your Sunset. Yep. And it's interesting. How, I'm, I'm curious how, like, Arc 3 Including will go in like, later ones when she runs into like, Oh, that explains it. It's like, ow. <laughs> Ouch. Right, because I used to yeah. be pretty horrible. <laughs> so I, I recommend it. Yes, it's a very long read at this point. It'll just going to get longer, but definitely worth it it's like my i guess those all those other fix i re featured which are really long were really good yeah you well, this do one, like your long fix this one well, at least at this point unless they surprise it spring on us no romance yes no romance no shipping no shipping usually i like that part in the venture yes too, but but your waifus haven't met actually oh uh, that's very it. the shipping will happen at the end when they read up oh wait no <laughs> well, unless i don't know I'm i don't know how it's gonna end i'm not time. the author <laughs> If I was the author, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not. So, that's the fanfic. And so, here is where we move on to the movie. 
All right, so this is the second half of our 200th episode here, and, well, we're going to talk about, as we teased before, the movie. The movie. The movie. The it movie. It came out. We saw it, of course, because why wouldn't we? <laughs> no, we didn't. We're just, we're just pulling this out um, of the blue. <laughs> right. So before we get into the super spoiler heavy stuff, we're just going to do a quick, quick little thoughts. Um, so just so you know beforehand if you want to yeah if you want to know if you want to know what we thought about um it. we liked it we liked it i we liked it a lot. i did i did like it uh, it was, it was a lot of fun in many ways um it had fantastic songs the animation is beautiful oh geez it's just it was a lot of fun to go to and see these characters on the big screen like for real it, yeah like, it was... and not just as a weird pseudo limited release thing for a spinoff yeah yeah, the not like the Equestria Girl stuff. It was, it was really cool to actually see the ponies. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, the the, the soundtrack, the songs were amazing. The animation was yeah. just gorgeous. There's a lot and, of funny bits too. Oh yeah, and and like yeah, it's it was just fun. It was it was a lot yeah, of fun. it was a lot of fun to watch it. Uh, so we would say go see it for sure. Yeah, if you ha- are still on the fence, or like oh, I'm going to wait for the video. Well, Nah, nah, go see it go in the theater. Go see it in the theater. Go Bra- see it in theater. Go be brave and see it in the theater. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, it, it's worth the ticket price. Yes. Definitely uh, worth the ticket price. Of course, your theater is charging like 20 bucks for a ticket, in which is, whoa. Yeah, well, then there's something wrong with your theater. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with the movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely go see it. That's our uh, yeah, our quick, that, that's our quick, our quick, spoiler free version. Thumbs up, thumbs down yeah. version. Yeah, it's a and great. thumbs up. Yeah, as, as I guess part of the fan base definitely seeing it yes it's worth it. It, it, i would say it's required viewing for the fan yeah. <laughs> now now okay now that we got that part version out of the way here's the deal spoilers from here yeah. on out i mean i'm we're gonna go in depth yeah no spoilers. holds bar D- yeah, yeah so if you really don't want to hear spoilers you have about 10 seconds from now serious like seriously you're, it's counting down you don't <laughs> have a lot spoilers. of time left and well, here we go. Spoiler time. Okay, Twilight so kill Celestia. Wait, <laughs> sure. I'm sorry. Wait, I've been seeing that, so I had Ooh. to do it. Ooh. Anyway, so yes, to quick. So I guess hopefully quickly sub- synopsize a movie. So how you synopsize. Try and get that synopsis. word out there. The synopsis for the movie, because uh, yeah, it's a movie, so it's longer and so it's a little bit more. Um, <laughs> no, it's so a 22 minute movie. Movie starts off in Canterlot, and well, Twilight is doing this big old friendship festival thing and starts off she wants the other princesses help with stuff basically doing their big magic things they kind of tell her no you can do it yourself you do your own thing it doesn't wow. you, yeah <laughs> it's more or less what happens they tell you can handle this you don't need us to help you with the festival anyway then big song and um songbird serenade shows up and then oh no here's the storm king's army with it's led by tempest yep. shadow yep and she attacks uh, them, encases Celestia, Luna, and Cadence all in these this dark crystal thing. Crystal, not that crystal thing. <laughs> and well, Twilight and the main six uh, they escape. Escape. Yes. They escape, and they run because they, Twilight heard Celestia tell Luna to go south to find the Queen of the Hippos, and then she got well crystallized. Yes. Yeah. So Twilight goes it's off the best information she's got. Let's go south and meet the Queen of the Hippos. So find the hippos. <laughs> yep. So they kind of move south, and they, and of course Tempest has to go after her because uh, Storm King demands all four princesses so he could power up his staff thingy. He's got a big stick. Yep, he's got a big stick, and he walks softly. Mm, he's not Ro Roosevelt though. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, they go. They go with Ronda in the desert. They find Kluge Town, where it's kind of scary, and they get harassed until Capra saves them. Because, well, yeah. He, he smells a con, a good con, to help him out. So he'll yes. save them. And it turns out the reason he's saving them because he has a debt to a little certain crime lord. And, uh, well, he does that, and he looks at him, he's, he's about to sell them out. Tempest shows up, too. Oh, no. Tempest saves the date. Wait. Wait, no. <laughs> so, yeah, they once again, they escape, and they get to uh, get on an airship. And it turns out they stowed away on a former pirate vessel, which is now under the control of the Storm King, Ca- Captain Celiano and her cr- cr- pirate, pirate crew. Pirate parrot. Yeah. Pirate pirate parrot party. Good. There you go. There you go. You did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, they on there they kind of find out that, well, they're kind of miserable and Dash motivates them to be pirates again. It's them back their mind. And they're helping this pirates decide to help them and then oh hey, they're supported by Tempest and her crew. 
Oops. They hide away, but then they escape through the bottom hatch and they are able to get closer to their goal of the Hippogriff Kingdom because they found out that was indeed. Yeah, so Hippogriff, not hippos. Like hippos. It's Hippogriff. Yeah, so they find it. It's dead. Oh, it's, nothing's there. It's abandoned until they hear singing. Singing. So then they find someone who's in some little water thing, and they get flushed down into it. And it turns out they find the uh, Hippogriffs have become sea ponies. Yay! And Scooby-Doo. they head there because the Storm King came after them. Oh, and they refuse to help them initially. Aww. And then it looks like, you know, Twilight gets them to uh, go, go uh, the rest of them to go help out uh, Princess Sky Star and, you know, befriend her because she's lonely. Turns out, though, it's Twilight is a plan to um, use that as a distraction so she could steal a little special pearl, uh, pearl of transformation pearl. or whatever it's called to uh, to help turn them into something powerful. Cause she, yeah, because she, uh, but she's trying to steal it, got caught, and, well, they all got kicked out. Aww. And... Well, after that, Twilight kind of uh, yells at them pretty bad and kind of uh, doesn't go very well. It didn't go well Yeah, at all. so uh, they kind of separate, and then Twilight gets captured. Um, Tempest uh, reveals who she used to be in this, yeah, um, that's how she lost her horn and why she's helping out the Storm King and everything. And, well, then the main six are all there with, the, or the rest of the main six are there with, and they get help from Capper and... The pirates and Princess Sky Star, they all come out to help her, to help to get Twilight back and everything. And then, nope, Twilight's in Canterlot with uh, Storm, the Storm King and everything. And they're going to yep, they t- zap the pr- magic for the four princesses and put it on the staff. Yay. Wait, oh. not yay. <laughs> not yay. <laughs> not yay. Yeah, it turns out it gives them ultimate power and stuff. And uh, Phenomenal cosmic. Oh, now I get myself quite. a sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, the rest of the main, main six and all of their friends sneak in through a cake and they start, you know, fighting the Storm King's henchmen and they get there and they, they tiny, um, everything looks like it's going to happen, go bad. And then bam, they land around in Storm King because they launch themselves out of cannon and they tussle a little bit more, they tussle a bit more. And then, you know, Tempest helps them out and, or try to help out Tempest and then Tempest helps them out and because Tempest is redeemed and Storm King is defeated and everyone celebrates with, you know, a songbird serenade singing and everything. And that's more or less it. Yep. A bit messy because, again, it's, it's kind of hard to remember everything because it's, it's long... an hour and 40-something minute movie, I think. It's a lot more than our standard fare. Yeah. Even the Quester Girl stuff wasn't this long. So uh, that's the summary. To summarize. Yeah. Let me... That's still somewhat quick. All <laughs> let, me, considered. let me explain. No, that's too long. Let me... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because... Again, though, the animation some... was beautiful for the it most was... part. I think there's one or two spots that are kind of weird looking just because I think of the mix of 3D and 2D. Yeah, like the opening, I think. I think a lot of people commented like when the trailer was coming out, the opening with the Pegasus flying over Cantalot. I think a couple points looked like compositing was a little bit yeah. off, but nothing major. Yeah, there's one point, I think, um, during the windmill scene. The windmill scene, yeah. Yeah, the windmill scene. When they, were, they were Initially, when they were running, the one of the angles, it looked kind of weird. Like, it looked like the running speed of the animation wasn't quite matching with how fast they were going. Oh, so like an old video game. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, yeah. So it, was, it wasn't... That part was there, and there's a one part, I think, where we, uh, there's a, uh, an image of Tempest where the perspective shift wasn't quite matching up with the background. So yeah. it looked like Tempest was kind of flat. Well, they're 2D, so... I know, but it looked <laughs> worse than usual. Well, worse looked, than usual. Wow. Right? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it looked more flat than it should have. Yeah, it looked like a cardboard cutout kind of standing up somewhere. Where she, yeah, it was kind of weird looking. But overall, though, the animation is still pretty great. Um, there's a couple points I'm trying to remember specifically where actually the animation is really good. I think actually during the um, Sea Pony song was one particularly great part. Yeah, that whole scene was really cool. Mm-hmm. The Sea Pony Underground it's Kingdom. Very light and um, all the colors and lights mm-hmm. and shining. They really went all out right there. Oh yeah, they did. Speaking of animation, I remember one of the big things was that the storm or Tempest's ship when the trailers was kind of a lot of people were not really. Ugh. Yeah, it, I think it, it looked was, a bit better. A bit better, or maybe I don't know. Maybe it's confirmation bias or what, but it looked better in the actual movie than it did in the trailers. Yes, I have to it, it, look it looked, at them side by side, being sure, but. Yeah, one thing I, know, I, I I clearly remember the opening scene in the trailer when everyone was complaining about the the ship from mm-hmm. the trailer. 
that scene was shorter in the movie. It didn't show as much of the ship coming through the clouds there. Mm, we saw more of it later, but that scene, I, I reckon, I noticed was a little bit shorter. Maybe they cut it because they didn't have time to actually finish it. Yeah, because that was the... Uh, when, when I saw that scene starting to happen, I was really watching to, for that ship quality, and I was, hey, wait, the scene ended a lot. That, yeah. That, that cut came it went sooner faster. than it should have. It went faster. I didn't quite get a good look at it. Yeah. What was it? I was looking at... Uh, there's a lot of stuff in that opening scene as well. Um, I did like the fact that it's kind of like... It's kind of Twilight's being Twilight again. Yeah, she's, she's stressing over getting everything done. And she's kind of being a dork. Mm-hmm. Especially, Especially in that little, like, wing, ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the whole opening, I mean, she's got this super serious thing, and she looks all serious asking for help, and, like, it, it like it's, you know, super critical, important. And then she goes, j- jumps into her an explanation of what it actually is. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's I, a nerd! It's, it's, <laughs> it's nice over to something see this again, because that was one of my complaints for the last few uh, seasons. It's just kind of... They kind of, like, took her uh, role as princess too seriously. Yeah, they forgot the old Twilight. They forgot who she was, and they just went, princess, okay. Got it. And then here she is, making mistakes and being a dork. And <laughs> so it was really nice seeing that. We finally got an explanation for what that chart was about. <laughs> yeah. Because there was so much speculation over all the things on the chart. It's just a light show. Yeah, she just wanted a fancy light show. That's all it was, was a light show. Or a songbird. <gasps> yep. Uh, and it's kind of weird that apparently in Equestria, Songbird is a bigger celebrity than the princesses. <laughs> well, that was that was sort of a joke I that know. Celestia said, but yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, course, look at look uh, at the real world. How many people care more about celebrities than they do about political figures? Yeah, well, to a degree. <laughs> well, there's a difference between being famous and infamous. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, also horse puns, definitely. Horse puns. Horse puns. Uh, that's been a staple of yeah, but I was, of MLP. I'm glad they're still there. Yes, all the um, horse puns. Oh yeah, in the beginning there was a bit where when they first showed Pinky on the on screen, they had her make a balloon of discord, which yep. then deflated. It's like, oh Aww. yeah, you don't get up here. Here, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Sir, not appearing in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the thing which they kind of warned us, which is they have to kind of reintroduce us to the characters. Yes, those first couple scenes yeah. in the opening was definitely quick introduction to these quick characters. introduction you could definitely see them going through their standard introductions you could see what was going on that they were you know very specific name name dropping of the characters you're raising a barn <laughs> that was a great scene that was so great <laughs> i wasn't raised in the barn i was just born in one and spent most of my, my time. family just have one i was but born most of my formative so. years there Natasha just racing by, just kicking drinks of cider as Appleton keeps refilling it. But yeah, I, I think they did the reintroduction of the characters really well. Yeah, because it, it wasn't it didn't drag on either. S- yeah, you could see what they were doing for those who were expecting it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't obnoxious. It wasn't you know just bashing your face with the introduction. Yeah, it was it was purposeful. It was well done. So they did a good job. They got it. it out of the way pretty quick before the movie actually started. Yes. What was it? Oh, yeah. During that Candlelot scene and later in the movie when everyone's enslaved and everything, lots of background characters and whatnot. We've gotten, to, we've gotten to see, um, come to see you over the years. We've seen, I saw uh, Sassy Saddles, uh, Moon Dancer, Parrot Coco, Top. the CMC, uh, Lyra. Oh, that was a thing. Kyra Top. I'm trying to think. Uh, we saw Big Mac, Bulk Biceps. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying. I'm Coco. Losing. Oh, Photo Finish. I yeah. said Coco. They said Coco and Sassy were working yep. together. Yep, they're working together. Which, yeah, little nods to continuity and whatnot. Stuff you wouldn't get if you, unless you've been watching the show all this time. Yep. And the thing but you is, you don't have also, to get. So it's yeah. not like Halo Four. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm, right. Mm. <laughs> Gotta get my jabs in. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's a bit. It's one of them's a good. Th- you know, could barely get a room in a stable. It's like, ha, ah, <laughs> <of> hotel. <laughs> it reminds me of the ad before the movie. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, one of the ads before the movie. Just oh. keep going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of stuff before the movie, the, the, there was the uh, Hanazuki short. Right. That was well animated. It was well animated. Just other than that, it was kind of cute. Uh, it's kind of beyond that, though. It's kind of, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, sure. If that's Hanazuki, then I'm not interested, I guess. That's that. 
It's a thing. It's, it's there, but it's very I'm short, so don't worry about whatever. it. There was, oh, yeah, there's a couple other things. One day, oh, and uh, I was, this is something I noticed. Um, when Grubber pulls out the little megaphone thing to announce uh, Tempest to try as a transformation noise from Transformers. Oh. I appreciated that. Yeah. I got that in. I was like, okay, that's great. And it's, it is Hasbro. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think this is something some people are going to kind of find some people are not going to be happy about. Uh, print the princesses being them, they're taking off really fast. <laughs> yep. It's like bam, bam, totally bam. Totally useless. Yeah. People Just are not going to be like in the show. Yep. People are not. So gonna be, some people I know are going to be upset about that. Yeah. I mean, it, you had to do something. You had to get them out of the way somehow. They had to get. The, uh, there was a couple MacGuffins that I was noticing. Not huge MacGuffins, but noticeable that they were MacGuffins to deal with problems mm-hmm. uh, that that I did notice, but I think they did handle them fairly well. Yeah. There's a couple things like that. Yeah, the other thing was, Twilight was about, Twilight was about to be captured, and that was a cool, kind of neat. Uh, Derpy saved her. That was a thing. Yeah. They specifically, like, there. There's your big Derpy thing. Here you go. Happy now? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and then she didn't appear for this movie because she was frozen. Well, she appeared at the end again. Yeah. Until they then. Unfroze her. Yeah, so there you go. There's her, her big cameo. There you go. I think she even talked briefly. Well, yeah, she she cried out Twilight yeah. before she saved there her. There you go. And then she did pop up a, a little bit during the, the big song and dance before that. Yeah. When she failed to make the connection on the bro who's. Yeah. Oops. Um, this is something I was not sure. Um, um, Storm King um, himself. I was not sure what to, where we're going to get from him. Um, personality-wise in the movie, I remember he showed up in the comic prequels, and I wasn't sure it was going to the where you have, you know, comic and yeah, show comic thing and can sh- be totally different. They they match, I think. Yeah, he they was match a, quite well. fun villain. He, didn't, he was. Unfortunately, he didn't show up too often. Yeah, I, I would love to thing. have seen more of him. It's mostly Tempest was the big one. For yeah, most Tempest of the movie. was a primary antagonist. Yeah, but for when story he was on purposes. screen, he did a lot of fun, because like the whole, the whole spell phone call thing. Oh, that was... So he doesn't know how to use it at all. It's well, like I mean, an old man with technology. It's interesting. It, they show up with this potion. Yeah, and it starts that's like the tone. old, like an old Nokia ringtone. <laughs> it was great, and they poured it, and it showed up. And as it was, you know, the spell was taking effect. It, made, it was doing the dial-up yep. sound. It was dial-up doing whole modem. Dial-up modem yep. sounds. It was so great. Oh no! To, to, no, no, no! To, to your right. To, to your right. To your right. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, he, was, yeah, he was a lot of fun. And then later in the movie, he was also kind of the, you know, just talking about it, all the stuff he was talking about in the later movie. Just pretty funny. He's he's a great villain. It's he's funny, but he's also evil. Yeah, it, there is no room that in in his character yeah. to be he was redeemable. Talking about his brand and his image and. Yeah, there, there's no room in his character to be redeemable. He, he's never going to be a good guy. Also, he used guy. to be known as someone else because uh, he's talking about his new brand. It's like, mm. <laughs> My brand. And then that was the other thing was the the pirates there. What they were carrying was his merchandise. His merchandise. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's one of... It, hmm. He's funny. He's humorous. He's But he's also bouncy, great evil. But he's also evil. <laughs> I like it. Just like... Yeah. He's not the, I'm evil all the time. He yeah. joked about trying to do that, but he's just, yeah. Now, one thing, it's, um, he's a great villain. Yeah, when they kind of, uh, their escape from Cantalot was kind of a, uh, in some ways, deus ex machina. It was a bit. Outside help from Derpy, and then when they actually fell off the waterfall, they're on a bridge, and Twilight's like, okay, fine. And then starts charging up, she hits one of them, but it reflects and, well, breaks the bridge. And it's like, Jesus, what is, how much power did she put in that one? <laughs> Yeah, destroyed the bridge in half a second. Well, she is pretty powerful. Yeah, it's like wow. Does that mean she was she's actually intended to hurt, actual to injury? Probably not. I mean, they are armored, so she's probably you know powered up to try and get through the armor, well, not still, realizing well, it's still the armor as well. In which way, that's a lot of power put into a spell. Yeah, if it or the bridge is already weakening, weakening. In which way, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with she was actually willing to go that far if it meant you all stopping invaders. Because <laughs> well, when you got an invading army, you don't really kind of who's made it pretty clear they're not going to listen to reason and diplomacy, you kind of got to go for, uh, well, violence. Yeah. And that was sometimes actually... reason and diplomacy don't work anymore. <laughs> that was actually one of the, the MacGuffins that I, I noticed that they used. They used it a couple times. The Storm King's army has magic repelling and magic absorbing materials yep. like that completely you... nullifies 
Twilight's powerful magic. Yep. Nullifies or reflects it. It's almost like it, it, there's room for this too because we've seen that there are things that can do that. Mm-hmm. Chrysalis's throne absorbed yeah. huge amounts of magic, completely nullified even Discord's magic. So there mm-hmm. is room for this. Yeah. So it's not like some weird out of nowhere out of nowhere thing, but it is. They did take care of that problem because it's like, well, Twilight's really powerful. Why couldn't she just zap everyone? Yeah. Because they have things that counter the magic. Yep. Although, Why couldn't Twilight get out of a cage? Because the cage is made out of it, too. Yeah. Well, of course, some of the armor, there are some holes in the armor, so it's just one well play shot. <laughs> oh, there goes your arm. <laughs> hey, just like Star Wars, you got to shoot him in the joints, except you don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not like they're shooting straight back anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, man, too bad for that wall. Mm. Mm. Mm, yep. <laughs> well, now you've been missing the wall. Come on, man. But uh, yeah, th- what happened was they got down the river, you know, they went down the waterfall and they came out like, holy crap. Like, they're like, whoa. They like, just that was that yeah it was a that was a thing it was um seven minute war yeah um and then they have they wind up in the desert which we saw a skull of in there <laughs> right a skull with a bug crawling all of it and everything yeah and also Pinky just kind of losing Pinky's it. losing it more yeah. than normal yeah she's gone gone well, until well they mentioned oh hey look there's a town over there she's, she's back <laughs> yeah it's Kluge Town. Clue's down. Yep, the same one we saw in the comics. Yep. Yeah, not surprising. That's where they. Yeah, Capper. Capper. Um, yes. Con, art, con artist. Yes. It becomes pretty clear because he's well, whole, his whole thing. He saved them through well, con. He uh, prevents everyone else. They're sick with some sort of horrible disease. And oh no, the one of you got it. Color uh, pastelis coloritis. Yeah, pastel colors. Inflammation apparently because yeah. they said coloritis. Yep. So. Pastel color swelling. Yep. Yep. Couple scenes there, which yeah, I'm noticing because the fandom noticed too. Uh, Capper and Rarity. Mm. Yes, that's always mm. been one, even from the yeah, trailers. We even, saw, we even saw in the movie Spike's like... getting jealous. Yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's because Capper's a charmer and Rarity and charmers. Oh, dear. And she was charmed, all right. She was charmed. Oh, no. Spike, you're, you're doomed. <laughs> you're doomed, Spike. <gasps> Doomed, doomed, doomed. Yeah. Doom, 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 well, until, doom. except for the fact, well, he turns out he was playing them. Yes, he was he conning tried to them. sell them off. Yeah, tried to sell them, not just, you know, but sell them to this guy who's, well, apparently looks like he was looking for him sort of, sort of, sort of an entertainment act or something. Yes. That's not great. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name, Virgo. I think I can't. Remember. I think it was. Virgo. I think it was like Virgo. That sounds right. I know they did a. What was that a Shining reference? And he bursts the door open. Here's Virgo. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Another shining reference. Hmm. Yes. Like yeah. That the, the thing with a clue, it was very uh, the desaturated comparatively, which makes sense. Well, I mean, it that, would that make that sense. Part of it is desert, it, it works on a way from a narrative perspective of the sense that this, like, that you know, yeah, this is not Equestria. Yeah. This is a totally different place, and this is alien to them, and just like it's alien to the audience. And I just remember, like, one of the cool things with the art book, and this is something I wish was in there, but, you know, I, I can understand why it's not, was initially Kluge Town was going to be built into the, um, an old dragon skeleton. Huh. A giant dragon skeleton. That was going to be it, and they were going to be, like, mining pieces of an old dragon. That was the whole purpose of the town. It's like, holy crap. That was not going to make it in. <laughs> so my understanding was, yeah, basically with the movie, they were told, go wild, and then we'll dial it back. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. But yeah, there's no way you can tell. It's a little bit more gruesome than a kids' it was movie. Metal as hell in the, the art book. Yeah, it's a, a little bit gruesome like there. It, like it was a dead dragon draped over a mountainside, and they just built the town into the dragon skeleton. Yeah, how would Spike react to that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spike didn't actually do much in this movie. I'm now thinking about it. <laughs> he was a flamethrower. Yeah, he was a flamethrower. But other than that, he really actually didn't do too much well he didn't do anything wrong either i know but i'm just saying he had he a couple really integral do points, anything it's kind of interesting he also wasn't bad he was pretty much where he where he needed to be yeah but i'm just i'm just saying it's just kind of interesting and they didn't really give him much to do he just kind of was there and then so every once in a while there'd be a joke involving him and or wisecrack or a joke or something sometimes it's expense which was pretty funny but he was a yeah. puffer fish yeah he was a puffer fish a puffer fish. what is happening that's a good question. I've been asking myself that all week. Yeah, yeah. What was one of the, one of the, the, the um, pirates and stuff? Um, are is interesting. Uh, this is something that actually was mentioned in the art book, and I noticed on this TV, on the screen, which was all of them have at least one body part missing. Yeah, every single one of them, because they're pirates. 
Yar. And obviously, pirates. they've had some adventures. They've had some adventures. They're not pirates. What did they say they were? They were swashbuckling Buckling treasure seekers. Treasure seekers. Yeah, it's not pirates. Remember, so actual pirates were pirates. bad. I know. So <laughs> yes. pirates. So pirates. <laughs> but also, yes. like, um, this was actually really funny because um, they were, it's like, they get discovered. What do we do? We know there's, there's a whole like talent saying what to do. You know, we should tie them up. We should hurt them. Uh, we should scar them uh, uh, emotionally. Uh, uh, that was clip their wings off and then, uh, yeah, and, then clip, and then what's the handbook say? We gotta throw them overboard. Uh, and then they're about to be thrown overboard. And then whistle blows. Break time. And then oh, break just, time. All oh, just that, get then they're at lunch table. Like what just what just happened? And Josh is like what? Wait what? What? <laughs> and she questions, and De- Twilight just gives her a look. Just, like, yes. seriously? You're going to question this? Don't question it. Just, <laughs> just this <laughs> but look. But it makes no sense. Don't question it. <laughs> I don't like that, though. You were just. Well, yeah. da- da- don't you. Song. <laughs> don't you dare start doing it. That was not the time for a <laughs> song. Stop song. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but it that was. was. It wasn't. The other thing was, uh, yeah, Tempest just was just relentless. Like, and it, it, Happer eventually had a change of heart. That was another thing. Capper had a change of heart because, like, he was going to sell him out, and then he, he saw, you know, nice. after Rarity sewed new buttons on his stuff, you know, fixed his outfit and gave him new shiny buttons. He's he, like, for f- no reason, he's like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, and then he tries to help him up with something. Tempest, of course, Tempest doesn't totally trust him, which is a wise Tempest. Wise Tempest, because it turns out he was lying. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Yeah, but then they, but the problem is they're discovered because of Dash and her sonic rain boom. Yeah. Which is just one big sick sign that says, here we are. But it was cool. It was cool, but it was stupid as Twilight really noticed. But that was another thing I almost forgot. Um, Twilight was the only one who did not trust Capper. Everyone else was like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll go with him. Twilight's like, uh, yeah. Mm. And yeah. she was kind of right. Yeah, she, she was, was right. She was absolutely right. And then the only reason it worked out is because he had a change of heart in the end. Well, actually, even then, it didn't totally work out. <laughs> it didn't totally work out. But then the next time, it was to Although, Dash got showboaty and uh, Twilight's trying to stop. No, no, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> do you think it's because of Sonic Green Poop? Just... <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, but in the end, it, it, it ended up being... Because if, if they didn't do that, then they wouldn't have shown up later. Although, who knows? They may have made it there anyway. Yeah, well... Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, but anyway, way, it was definitely made it sure that they knew where they were. And uh, that was also interesting, just... Um, what was it? Oh, yeah, when they left, they just dropped out of the bottom. And, like, twice, like, I got an idea. I got this. I, I got this. And just, they drop out of the bottom and, and <laughs> hold on to this. Why? Hold on to this. <laughs> and they drop out, and then... Um, they're falling, free falling, and it's like weird because three of them well, don't have to be. No. <laughs> well, Dash wasn't. Yeah. She immediately started flying. Yeah, she's <laughs> flying in chase. <laughs> three year old can't fly, so uh, that's the problem. And it turns out, well, Twilight constructed a hot air balloon in midair out of a bunch of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> she constructed a suit of armor in a cave out of a box of scraps. <laughs> I was waiting for that. She's Iron Man. <laughs> she's Iron Man, except with a hot air balloon. Yeah, that, that was there was some great scenes in that um like when she got it constructed we got to fill it with hot air and just grab the spike like, light them up <laughs> yep or when putting everyone in the basket mm-hmm. grabbed everyone she grabbed everyone with magic and then you know dash was just flying grabbed dash with magic and dash was like Ugh. oh and just grump it's like really Grumpy dash. you didn't have to mm. after what dash pulled boom. Yeah, but Dash was yeah. back out immediately but, um, to push the air, the balloon. Oh, there was one thing that was really cool. It was a really cool shot um, after Tempest blew, blew up the pirate ship. And it was a really cool shot because we said it was not a shot direct shot of the pirate ship, which also, by this way, it was also at this point, uh, fly the flared out feathery things. And yes, that was so cool. Yeah. What we saw was a reflection in the water of the ship being blown up. Yeah. And it was, that was a really cool shot, just, just exploding. It's like, oh, geez, are they dead? Well, no, they can't be because we. Well, they can't. We, it's a kids' movie. Well, no one was, can die. That, <laughs> it was more, but more or less because we've seen the scenes from them at the end, so we know they're not yeah. dead. But still, it's like, dang, she just blew up the whole ship. Mm-hmm. That was interesting of self. Which is um, sad because I like that ship. Oh, well, that's why I have a, a toy version of it. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool shot though with the water reflection. It was. But yeah, yeah, that the, was the flaring of the, the whole song. Do that with yeah, Dash's that's a, that's song. song. Um. What's the name of that song about awesome? 
Time to be awesome. Time to be awesome. I think it was awesome. I couldn't remember the other ones. It was it was a great song. And yeah, the imagery on that, especially you know, when they unfurled everything on the yeah. ship and flared those out, is like, yes! Yeah, that was pretty cool. So cool! Yeah. Yeah, that was a cool thing. What was the other thing? I was Oh, the, the Hippogriff Kingdom. That was like an overgrown ghost town. That was actually kind of a genuinely creepy looking place. It was. Ruins. kind of cool. Yeah, ruins ru- of the former. Yeah, well, they bailed. Yep. I was, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's like, that makes you wonder, it's like, how long it'll go do they bail if, um, okay, if... If nature's been able to overgrow but that also, one, and Princess no one's Sky known Star about. was there when they were still hippogriffs, so uh, it could have been that long ago. But then again, who knows how long they live? Yeah, it's, it depends on like climate and everything too. Like certain climates, it's just going to grow faster. They, than they are climates. surrounded by water, so that does tend Speed lend to bit. rapid growth. Yeah, so it's probably been like probably ten years. I would guess like ten years or so. Maybe she was a kid when they moved away. It went. Maybe or Sky Star was a kid. Yeah, Princess Sky Star. Very uh. Very bouncy. Very bouncy, and, yeah. Um, Very good match for Pinky. And that, I was going to say, there's, I'm pretty sure there's going to be huge Pinky Sky Star shipping going yeah, on. That's another thing. Holy so we got crap. Capra and Rarity, uh, Pinky and, uh, and Sky, Sky Star. Star. I don't think... I mean, the people are kind of probably trying to ship um, Celiano and Dash, but I don't think so. I don't think they interacted that yeah, like that. Yeah, there's not enough there. Oh, speaking of it's that enough whole for a shipper, there, but I'll be honest... That part, um, the whole pirate ship, I think, as some people have brought this up, I think that seems to be like somewhere pacing issues kind of come in. Kind of feels like the pirate part kind of went really fast. A little bit. I would have liked to see more of that because we saw this backstory in the comics. Yeah. Um, between how they got to where they were. And I would have liked to seen a little bit more of that in the movie. Yeah. And establish the pirates a bit more. To act and build yeah, the relationship. It, yeah, I just kind of felt them. like almost you could almost at the way because it was so fast you could almost literally cut the whole pirate thing out. Yeah, which well you can't because they were important later. Yeah, but it almost feels like you could and wouldn't really change the pacing. Well, it would change the pacing. It wouldn't really change the uh, story too much until the end. And even then, it's just you could you know to, to have the, rather than just sky starts all the hippogriffs and then you kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah. Which way, like I said, the pirates. Um, I would have liked to extend the pirate, yeah. not to remove. I was it. say, I just, I didn't say, I never said I wanted to. I yeah. just said you could, could yeah. literally remove it and not change too much, too horribly, or at least not in such a way that's not, it's not hard to fix. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It's like, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think people did bring up some pacing stuff. So um, I have to go see if that. Yeah, might... uh, it did. It did feel a bit short. Yeah, it's like it was like. Kind of yeah. cut through it a, a, a rather yeah. quickly. Yeah, there was also the bit where it's like I kind of figured out what Twilight was doing when they went the sea pony thing because after they got shown that whole orb of transformation, the pearl transformation thing, it's like, huh? Yeah, as soon as she, the way she had them go, it was pretty obvious what she was gonna yeah, do. Yeah, we right saw that. It was like, wow, Twilight can be conniving. Can yeah. be. She's desperate. Yeah, desperation. She's desperate, kind of. and that. And, yeah. and at this point, she's kind of like thinking, well, this is what I do to save a question. This is what I gotta do to save a question. So be it. Yeah, now that you mentioned the the pacing thing, I think another place you could have done it. It wasn't as as bad, quote unquote. The intro with Tempest coming in and all stuff. It's that just like fast. showed up, and all of a sudden they can't win and they have to leave. Yeah, it's like it was pretty fast. I would have liked to see you know them try to fight maybe. Yeah, and then a bit. and have them actually realize through a few more you know skirmishes yeah that they're not gonna win that was also pretty fast i have to be honest yeah i would have liked to see a, a little more I think those there. Are the two, if, if pacing issues i think those are the two spots with the major ones anything else is kind of like eh. yeah and even then it's not major it's yeah. notable but not major yeah so it's kind of interesting that yeah yeah there's this whole like magic alarm around the uh pearl <laughs> until i got caught up in the jellyfish tentacle things the anemone almost yeah that it, was jellyfish yeah it was it was more like a jellyfish yeah, and she, it was she's being stung too it was like geez yeah ow 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 yeah it's just kind of like wow just it's kind of like wow twilight really did screw up on this part and yeah again kind of nice seeing her you know not be perfect she's not a perfect pony princess and kind of we see i kind of understand where she's coming from in the sense like she, you know, the previous her uh, previous re- act- interactions have been we can't really trust anyone. Yeah, you also get thrown way out of your league, and you get hit upside the head multiple times by 
you know, and failures on of top trust. Of that, tw- a couple times your friends have led you into a worse situation, but inadvertently, yes. But at this point, it's kind of the you could understand at this point, she's like, okay, they they can't handle this very well. I'm gonna have to do this and just do it this way. You can understand why she'd get to that point in her thought process of I can't trust my friends out here in uh this alien world so to speak i guess yeah yeah you can see what led her to, in the sense to that, that point she she thinks her friends can't ha- are incapable of handling this stuff because mm. they're quick to trust and again too quick to um do things which aren't helpful turns out that's not the case yeah <laughs> turns out that's not the case and it, it, the it's interesting um she actually uh she unloads on pinky in particular um, yeah this is one particular scene i had a couple mental yeah this notes. is weird um she said what this is the specific phrase she said was uh maybe i don't didn't need friends like you yes i was a bit caught off guard through that yeah, argument like, it was like this doesn't quite yeah. see even with twilight's desperation yeah this is the, that's that where I, this through, is right yeah this is the part where i was like that felt a little bit out of too character. far it, it did it 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 seems sort of like a nod back to the Discord episode. Um, which one was that? What, what was about the name Discord? of that one? Or no, earlier first, Return of Harmony. Return of Harmony. No, I think it was Return of Harmony. The whole you know when yeah. Discord broke them all apart. Who needs enemies? When you have friends like these. When you have friends like these, and that it seemed more like harkening back to that. Yeah. And it may have been the attempt, but I don't yeah. think it worked. I think it was just too intense. Yeah, but and then I again, I understand too, on the, se- on the I, side I, I, you kind of need to do that for the sake of the movie. Yeah, I mean, they had intense. to separate them in order to get to the next plot point. They had to have a reason to separate. Yeah. them. So, in a sense, you have to have it be that intense for the movie. So, but it's kind of weird. Kind of feels like, in some ways, a regression for Twilight. It did, and yeah, she was you know at the end of her wits. Yeah, that, the whole you time, could say just but, you know she's tired and angry cranky and angry and yeah she was she was at the end of her wits through the whole thing so i mean tired, I desperate, yeah, you could but it did seem a little bit it's like intense. not not so much that i say it was completely wrong but enough to go well she's wrong and, well <laughs> i mean well i mean the writing being wrong for yeah it. it's like not enough to say that but might have been done a little differently yeah i wasn't too certain about the, the way the she kind of word choice all, there yeah they all leave her all of them leave Twilight behind, and uh, Twilight's like, "Oh crap, I screwed up." Yeah, I that, really screwed that, up. That is one thing. She, as soon as she said it, she realized what she did. Yeah. So it wasn't, you know, too horrible. That, that's kind of the redeeming yeah. point on where we say it was kind of iffy. She did immediately. Go, oh crap! Did I really just say that <laughs> that she did something wrong there. Yeah. So that's interesting of itself um spike always spike did stay with her i was wondering if spike was actually going to go with them for a second i think that scene was the him not Deciding, knowing what to do trying to figure out which way to go with because like he's stuck with Twilight all his life but at the same time he kind of probably realized Twilight did screw up but then again he yeah. probably realized why needs really needs someone right now she don't leave her alone at this point and he made the right choice he will spiral he made the right choice yeah because then he was able to warn them when he he got captured yep because she was just talking and then I also like that immediately, she's immediately, she sees Spike's jump, immediately just ready to fight, even though it didn't work, but still. It didn't just work. just immediately just, I'm going to fight now. Mm-hmm. Time to kick butt. Although, I, I did like how Spike got out of his, because he got grabbed. Yeah, breathe fire and light his arm on fire. Uh, Spike using his flame for good. <laughs> hey. He's actually using his flame more. Yes. Yeah. And also this, once she got captured, you know, Tempest and her start talking, and then Tempest, there's, there's a villain song, which is great. Oh my god, that villain song was amazing. Yeah. Props it actually to might Daniel be Daniel uh, on that one. Might be my favorite song in the movie. It, it's, one, the, during the song is also where they explain Tempest. Tempest's backstory, and I think that part of the song, I don't know if that's in the actual soundtrack. The whole, because it kind of quiets down a lot. It is kind of breaks the pace of the the, song a little bit. I disagree. I think I like the, it kind of needs that mellow part. It's horrible, yeah. But it's still an amazing song. Yeah. It's in the soundtrack for sure. Um, It's also cool that the the animation styles shift for that part. Oh, man. I guess enhanced pointy ponies. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Enhanced pointy ponies. That, That whole thing when doing the backstory. Yeah. Before we talk about the the backstory, yes. um, harkening back to you said earlier with the cool shots, yeah, like the ship blowing up, seeing yeah. the reflection. This was another place. 
the the cuts, the angles, the cinematography, mm-hmm. and the composition of this scene was so cool. Yeah, the the shots from above on the cage and the red like the the red floor, which is like lava, but not lava. I don't know exactly what that was. Um, Engine fluid, <laughs> something I don't know. But it was just everything about it screamed villain. It fit everything yep. so well. The angle, it was just, it was really cool. Yeah. And also, the title was in her the anti magic cage. She, yep. she's just she's sitting there just trying to get out so hard, and she just can't just reflects back. Yeah, it's like absorbing and and such like that. Yeah. Yeah. Dissipating, absorbing something. But anyway, yeah, the backstory, that was interesting. Just, again, the new animation style and stuff. But uh, it's just, you know, she's a little kid and she's got friends and stuff. And then, the, you know, the ball went into a cave and she goes, get it. And, oh, crap, there's an Ursa. I think that was a minor. Yeah, you, yeah I'm pretty sure that was, that, was a, that was a minor. minor not yeah, the but major. anyway. She got she slapped. Got dropped. <laughs> she got s- Oh, fish man. Got, got fish man got dropped. Fish man got dropped. <laughs> yeah. Tempest got slapped. Yeah, like that's what broke her horn. That's what gave her a scar. Yeah, the scar. Um, and, and after that, her magic didn't work the right. same. Yeah, it didn't work right. And her friends kind of bailed on her. Yeah, well, they got kind of scared. Yeah. Tried using her magic. And magic just didn't... tends to be explosive now. That's all it can do is just light off explosions. Yeah. So that sucks. And then she just, well, I'm out. <laughs> like, and fine, like, friends I don't need can't, you either. Well, can't use friend, have friends anymore. They suck. It's like, you're going to hate me for this. I know. I know where you're going. <laughs> you know where I'm know going. Because like, it sounds a lot like Starlight's backstory. Yeah, except done better. <laughs> it's still kind of petty, petty, but it went in a well, better writing direction. In a sense, I would kind of disagree. It's it's petty to a degree, but it, at the same time... It makes sense for a child. Yeah. Um, and she ran off and... At least she didn't try and start a cult. Yeah, she didn't, what she did, she went to someone and said, who said claimed that he could give her magic back, yeah. which she's trying to fix her life in a well, sense. Her whole thing is she's still angry that oh, yeah. because of that one, that one event, turned friendship on is horrible. But again, I think the implication needless. was it was just kind of a, she's trying and they're just rejecting her, which. Well, they reject that one time and that's what set her off. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of petty, but it makes sense for a child. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's just you're rejecting her constantly. Like, this isn't like, oh, they, there's something outside of the kid's control. This is like, no, this these kids are actively rejecting her because, oh, she can't use magic anymore and she looks weird now. So, there's that. Plus, again, it's no also cult told thing. from her perspective. Yeah. So, anyway, which way, um, her whole thing was, yeah, she she allied herself with the Storm King because he said, "I can get your magic back. I can fix you your horn me. if you if help." You help. Yeah, and I that was explained in back. the comic. Yeah. And then at the end of the movie too. Yeah, mm-hmm. help me out. Your horn, your magic will be back. And so it's like, okay, so that's what she wanted. She wanted. It's like it's interesting in of itself. It's like she's she just wants her magic back. So make her motivations make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was that whole thing was just um, yeah. So it's like that whole fight, and then the Storm King's there and everything, and again being all uh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, he gets you know the the, the staff. I can't remember what it's called now. And I, oh, it was named up. in the beginning. Staff they name dropped it. Name dropped it once in the very beginning. Yeah, but right he had the staff, the which needed the magic of the four princes. Was like, hmm, magic of the four princes. This seems very familiar. <laughs> T-Rex comparisons right back. Yep. <laughs> Although he you, actually, you know, didn't grow huge and just start destroying stuff. He was like, okay, was I got power in the staff. Hey, I've got control. He because he's raising them sun and moon over and over again because it's funny. Because <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Yep. And then, and then surprise, he betrayed Tempest. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Curse your sudden but inevitable trail. Yeah, he betrayed Tempest, and it's like, huh? Yeah, I'm not gonna f- help you. I, 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 I'm using you. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> it's like yeah, he's got a point there. <laughs> got a point. But yeah, it's that was kind of an interesting thing. It's like, yeah, she's still like, you can, you're still gonna help me, right? Yeah, 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 sure. And then, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. You, right, you made a deal with, me. yeah, no. <laughs> And then just, yeah, it's a surprise. And then there's a a bit of a fight there. And, uh, you know, then Storm King, because, yeah, the other main six, the rest of the main six get launched themselves out of cannon to literally land themselves on Storm King. Yeah, uh, because that was the whole Storm King. The Storm King actually made a big storm because that's like, I'm the Storm King. I need to have a storm. When they held Twilight, they had a cake and everything they made to hide the pirates in. And, you know, the ponies were all 
chained up and stuff because apparently they're chained and muzzled and jeez. Eesh. Not the main six. Other than Twilight or Pinky just being too happy. <laughs> Almost blew it. Pinky. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, Grubber. Grubber wanted green, cake. Lots of cake and. That's an eyeball. Eyeball. And then it blinked. Ah, <gasps> God. Nope. <laughs> and, well, our cover's been blown. <laughs> Yeah, so, awesome fight scene. Yeah, fight scene and the pirates and whatnot. Oh, geez. Fight scene. And Spike okay. Bean uses a flamethrower and all that. Uh, the fight scene had some really cool stuff to it. There are two scenes that I'm remembering in particular. Uh-huh. One of them is the Pinky-focused yeah. fight scene. Yeah, Pinky hands one of the guards a box, and then she pops out of it. Surprise! I have another surprise for you, and as a cupcake... And throws a cupcake at him at point blank range, but then it does this scene cut to, to the, the wall, wall behind him, and then and the cupcake splatter. splatter, and it is the this like is blood basically, like the the cliche getting shot in the head, blood splatter on the back of the yep. on the back wall. This That's what they did blood. with the cupcake. Now, of course, she you know she just you know then she kept just, shooting. It was just a cupcake, not blood. But then yeah. it snaps back and then does a scene that we've seen in the trailers where she just like Gatling cannons cupcakes at this guard and splatters him against the wall and he slides down smearing the yeah. cupcake. It's like, holy crap. And she's starting to laugh maniacally. More, <laughs> just like more and more disturbing laugh. Holy crap. And also Fluttershy, it was cool Fluttershy's way of dealing with giving one of them that therapy. That was the other thing that was coming to, to my mind. I, I seen little clips of that, the whole, you want to talk about it? You yeah. look really tense. You want to talk about it? Yeah, and, and then, then later, just, crying. <laughs> just the Sorry, session's crying. Over. Oh, shy. Sorry, session's over. Gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And How many bronies want to have a therapy session? <laughs> you can't have... Oh. No. <laughs> no therapy session for you. Because <laughs> she's not real. No. Uh Yeah. Was, yeah. All, yeah, but at the end, it was also cool. You know, Twilight had a very clear, like, distinction. Like, there, there's a Storm Queen collapse. There's there's tempest. a Tempest over there, barely hanging on. And, like, the storm's out of control. And she has an easy, just grab the, the jab the staff and, like, fix everything. But, nope, she goes for Tempest. You gotta go save her new friend. Yeah. It's like, why are you doing this? Because that's what friends do. That was almost that, that whole scene. I think that's another thing was that kind of, like, really, that went really quick, too. It's kind of, yeah. One talk and they're... Suddenly they're friends. She's twice because yeah. friends. Like, okay, that's a little weird. Yeah, if, again, I, think I would if, have liked if, to see more. If, if we saw, I think if throughout those interactions, we saw more of Tempest kind of doubting You know what the best place would have been? After Twilight gets captured and the whole backstory thing, if there was more interaction between them talking and Twilight trying yeah. to reason and talk with, yeah. with her and I think that was the problem things. is there wasn't enough of them interacting at that point to uh, really, for Twilight to, it almost feels like maybe there's something cut there. It may have been. Uh, and that, that leads me to the other, like, if they did have that, it may have been a pacing issue. Or it might have been a time issue. Just It's not necessarily pacing, it's just True. They time. want to keep We can't keep it. We certain... cannot have a two and a half hour pony movie as much as we'd love one. As, yeah, as much as we would love one, the, the kids would not last through that. Yeah, this was already almost two hours. Also, I you really got to watch for dialogue heavy scenes. Yeah. You got to be good with your cuts. You don't want to pull a Star Wars prequel. Yeah. Oof, oof. Over the shoulder, over the yeah. shoulder, over so the shoulder. So anyway, she uh... goes and saves Tempest and stuff. And I was like, why'd you, sa- you, know, so why why'd you, you save me? Why did you save me all that? And the main six are there, and then they get the staff, and then it's like, oh no, there's the staff, and they sit on the all holidays, and then we gotta fix that later. We gotta, there's still like, stuff uh... going on. They go to the, have to get the staff, and Storm King's trying to get the staff, and Twite barely gets it, but then they both then fall f- out. Flies through the window, gets sucked up by the tornado. Yeah, and then she looks like she's gone, and then she descends from on high, and then she ascends from De- on high. Descends, yeah, descends, descends from, from on high. <laughs> Uh, with the staff and everything the staff is like, yeah I saw this I died like, for your I, I sins. saw this I saw this scene coming and it's like we're gonna get a pony Jesus aren't we she is we're gonna get pony a pony Jesus. Jesus and yep we had it, it was basically a resurrection scene yeah and yeah so they're all hugging it out and nope oh, there's Storm King still there oh, and he's yes. gonna throw one of those little crystallizing ball things but, yeah yeah, and then Tempest just takes it for them, and oh no! And, yeah, she, and, and her momentum carries her forward to the Storm King, along with the gas, gas, yeah, the fart it, gas. <laughs> Why does it have to be green? Yep. And they knock, you know, so he gets crystallized too. But you know, they grab Tempest with the staff, or the magic of the staff, but they let him fall, and he shatters. He shatters. Like shatters. Like he's dead. That's Maybe like, that is one of the most brutal ways they've taken out a villain in the 
franchise. Sombra. Sombra exploded, yes, but we only Sombra's saw the horn. The, the closest. And the thing with Sombra is his horn wasn't it wasn't a rock at that point in time. Yeah. His body formed before he exploded. Storm King was a rock and he fell apart. Yeah, he shattered. He shattered. He's dead. There's no thing to put that. him back together. Why? <laughs> I will I don't know. I mean, just sweep it up and be done with it. I don't know, because it was interesting. After he shattered, he hit the ground and shattered, and they had the camera angle on the ground, you know, lying, camera yeah. flying on the ground. Oh, yeah, and his face. And, in his, head, and his face rolls half toward his face. Him. Yeah, half <laughs> his face. And then his eye shines. Yeah. His eye gets a, has a sheen to it, so. Well, this could be because it's crystal. Yeah. But, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, that was uh, like wow, that was pretty brutal. That was. I was not. I was like, I, wasn't I, was like, I just kind of remember that. I just like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> they went for it. I was wondering. I was wondering how they're going to handle Storm King yep. at the end. It's like, I was wondering, are they going to reform him, or is he going to be banished or imprisoned or whatever? No, shatter. He dead. He did. That was kind of crazy. And just then yeah, like of course the epilogue. They had the the songbird serenade, big the rainbow song like literally it's called rainbow it's literally (laughs) called rainbow it's a good song yeah it's a pretty good song great song yeah so that was the big old thing you know they had that and had a bunch of you know you know it's all happy and everyone's you know and all that stuff and then oh there's tempest off in the back kind of being awkward being moody (laughs) being moody emo (laughs) brooding and twilight goes oh hey yeah hey it's okay to come you know you you, you can join us you know more the merrier more friends than magic. Tempest is like, I don't know. It's like, you, you got a lot of good magic. And then Tempest does firework type things with the explosions. Like, I guess what you do work with works. what you got. Because, yeah, that's one thing. It's like, Tempest didn't get her horn repaired at all. It's like, you'd, you'd think maybe, you know, they'd do that for her. I, I, I'm wondering if it ever could. Yeah, I'm wondering. Maybe it just turns out, nope. Storm it, King it was totally can't. lying. And totally was. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was also interesting. It's like a fun, funny way to reverse the, uh, the damage the Storm King did and everything. They just put the staff in backwards. They literally just stuck it in backwards and it worked. And they reversed everything and fixed Candelot and then froze the princesses who were like, blip, blip, blip. And okay, yeah, you guys did it. You guys did an amazing thing for. Hooray. You saved Equestria again. Again. I don't know, how yeah, many times just, is that? Also, I noticed that <laughs> one bit at the end of Twilight and Tempest looking at each other. I was like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I think So we've got a new ship Capra there. and Rarity. We've got. Sky Star and Pinky. Pinky now Twilight and Tempest. We've got Twilight and Tempest. Oh boy! So got half of them. I told. I've said it before. Twilight's been shipped with um, pretty much almost every villain. Except for the Storm one King. One? Didn't ship with the Storm King. Although yep. shippers will hold that. You know. Oh, is that a challenge? And <laughs> is that a challenge? That that, that one scene where, where Storm King hugs them both. Oh, oh friendship yep, and, and blah, blah. Blah. that one. Yeah, friendship, pony. And blah, blah. Blah. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty fun. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. They also revealed Tempest. That's not my real name. Tempest Shadow. It's like, Tempest yeah, this Shadow seemed kind of intense a... for a, a pony. It's like, geez, what did your, what, why did your parents name you that? Nope. Turn, okay, her real name. Oh, boy. Here we go. Fizzle Pop Berry Twist. Fizzle Pop Berry Twist. So, I guess you'd call their <laughs> ship Twizzle? Twizzle. Uh... What a twist. What a twist! <laughs> yeah, um, so that was um, that was kind of a cool thing. Um, gotta kind of hurry along. We're almost at an hour. Huh. Oh, geez. Yeah, there's a lot to go. There's through. a lot. There's so um, much. We Discord can... is in the credits. Discord did show up in the credits. Like, actually, Discord is the first was a shadow of him. Then he was there. He was in the background when they're doing the dance because the credits are cool. It was also I think it was kind of similar to the uh, style they did with the uh, Tempest Bath flashback. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit flashier. It was kind of it was a cool little style shift right but there. But they're using the Toon Boom, not Flash. <laughs> it's a cool little style shift. It was. Yeah, Discord was probably just sitting back watching the show. Yep. It's chaos. It's what he lives for. Maybe he was captured off screen. We don't know. Nah. Why not? Can't capture the Lord of Chaos. Why not? Captured Once you have the Elements of Harmony, which were never mentioned. <laughs> well, actually, I actually think they said something about Elements earlier. They said Elements. They distinctly said Elements early on in the movie. So they did huh. at least vaguely mention them. Yeah, but well, uh, you know, they don't have them to use anymore. Yeah, well, <laughs> sort of. It's that depends on your interpretation. If if, they, yeah, if they, those they, are the elements, or they themselves are now the elements. Yeah, it's weird. Fanfics are fun. Fanfics are fun. Yeah, and I can't wait to Didn't see. Anyway. I can't wait to see what people do with this uh, stuff from this movie. Oh boy, there's a whole bunch of lore and backstory to um, go through. Are we going to ever see these characters in the movie ever in the show? 
Probably, probably not. not. <laughs> but there's a chance just because it is possible they could use sound alikes or whatever. Or they literally could just say, eh, just get the budget and get them back. <laughs> get them back. And who knows if they enjoyed doing it. Because I know way back with Transformers, they got a, you know, the, the 86 anime movie, they got a whole bunch of celebrity v- VAs, and then most of them didn't return for the show, not surprisingly. Not surprising. And they just got some sound alikes, or they just didn't even bother trying to make up sound alikes. And. <sighs> So no, and they're notice. not above changing voices if they need to. For example, Twilight's mom in the episode, she was voiced not by Tara Strong this time. Bon Bon. Bon Bon has changed <laughs> voices like voice. how many times? Different voice actor almost every single Until time. Until they consistent, made it consistent as of season yeah. five. And by the time they actually made her an, an, you know, an established background character, yep. instead of just background character number one or whatnot. Yeah. So... I think that's our kind of run through of the movie. Um, There's so much more we could yeah, talk so about. Yeah, so much more. We, we could do a, like, we've a scratched, whole second like, we've episode We just like, scratched the it. surface. We don't have time for that. Yeah. I do not want to do another two-hour episode. Like, Thank you very much. Uh, um, but yeah, this is a fun movie. Again, go see it. Yes. Please see it in the theater. Please. Just, if you can't, just please see it in the theater. Uh, apparently, I believe, yeah, it's, uh, as I think the news will say, uh, Germany said it will be coming out in March on Blu-ray and stuff. Yeah, and yes, to that. there is a leak. There's a leak. Don't watch that. Don't don't or, encourage that, well, please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Because we want more of this. Yes. We we want to see more of this. Our we want to see mo- this Pony the movie too. <laughs> well, I mean, even even if they don't do a second movie, yeah. the sales of the movie can determine whether the show goes. And on. also, two D animation in general, theatrically. Well, yeah, that we we we'll love to see more of this in general, even yeah. if it isn't the show. Oh, it's, it's kind of weird because it's two D character. Mo- yeah, animation, it was like but then three D background, so it's still two D animation, which was again very beautiful. Oh, it was. It was great. Um, for the, again, from those far, we did kind of nitpick a couple things here and there, but um, yeah, that's more or less my notes. More at this point, uh, there's probably a lot more I could get into. There's probably stuff I could, you know, when it comes out on Blu-ray and stuff, we'll freeze frame it. it and go, ah, see. Aha. There. Also, it's... another bonus: Starlight was only there for four seconds. Didn't talk once. Didn't talk once. Neither did Trixie. They showed up in oh. the background. That was it. No, that was that. Good. We know there's a sea pony showing up in season eight, though. Yeah. Oh boy. Shooby doo. They never sang shooby doo once. Good. <laughs> Good. But yeah, um, my favorite song personally was probably we'll Open Up Your Eyes, the Tempest Shadow song. Um, yeah. That Rainbow was, was pretty so great good. too. But yeah, they're Time all to be great awesome songs. Was great. <laughs> they're all great songs. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Oh, the, the opening song. Um, I we've got the we got this together. Yeah, that was. They're all great. Yeah, songs. they're all great songs. They, and they really I are. really actually want to get the uh, actual score. On soundtrack, I know Daniel Ingram teased that might happen. Let's see what happens there. Uh, Getting the yeah. score, yeah, because there's some good stuff there too. I didn't, um, it's you know, it's just have kind of blends in with the movie, but that's kind of what's supposed to do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a great. Movie. It, it it's good. What would you give it on a ten? Oh. <laughs> it's hard. I hate doing oh, stuff I hate on tens. Doing this. Um, but I already came up with a number earlier, so I'm good. F- eight. The same. Okay, yeah, let's go with eight. I I, I want to give it an eight. So because yes, it is really good. It's not perfect. You know, it's not perfect. But we're not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's got some flaws here and there, but not enough to really detract. Yeah, I think the only I think one thing I would say maybe sometimes I think maybe one bigger flaw I would just say maybe at times it feels like more of a law extra long finale. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's I think one, of the, was one of the worries going in the movie was kind of a you feel like a long episode. And I think that's one of the things a lot of critics are saying is it kind of feels like an extra long episode. Yeah, that that I've been hearing little bits in there about some people saying it's just kind of it's it's kind of plain, kind of generic. I wouldn't say generic. Or plain, I wouldn't but, uh, say plain or but generic. I would say at times, but I can kind of see like where it. they're coming from. I, it kind of does at times feel like an extra long episode. Yeah, so I'm it, not that, too that's where upset it, about that really. Yeah, that, that's where it takes a few dings and points. Bringing it down to an eight, yeah. But it's it's still a really good. Still movie. a lot of fun. Still and a lot the problem of is, fun. I was, I was one of the thing was I was worried the celebrity VA cast would just get get right in the way of the main cast. And no, they didn't. No, they didn't. They, that was my big worry. Perfectly. Yeah, they um they did fantastic performances. I was worried again worried because sometimes you get celebrity VAs and they don't do a very good. Job. And they phone it Actually, in. Actually, uh, if anything, Grubber is kind of like barely in the movie at times. Like, oh, there he is. He made the quip and then he's gone. Yeah, there but he is. Equipped and he's gone. He made the quips, but they were perfectly timed. Yeah. 
So, so he, he served his purpose very yeah. well. He wasn't yeah. overused. Um, he wasn't really underused, in my opinion. Yeah. So we ran out of time. We're running out of time. So uh, we got to yeah. We crack this up as much as we love. We love uh, to go we on. We can just keep going and going. Yeah, but uh, we we're out of time. So uh, that's it for this. Go see it. You'll probably enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, tell us what you know. Yeah. Tell well, us. Tell, tell us what you thought about it. Tell us. We might say something. <laughs> you, know, you never know. That's that. Yeah. All right, if you're still here, oh, wow, okay, I guess you did watch the movie or you don't care if you're spoiled. But, um, yeah, that's the end of this episode, though. It is. It is absolutely the end of this episode. Yes. 200. 200. Episode 200. God. Oh. Still can't believe we made it that far. Made it that far. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yep. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully. <laughs> hope you enjoyed our big, long movie thing. Yeah, we didn't even get... There's anywhere near what everything we want to talk about. I mean, there's so, there's so much. much stuff to talk about. Yeah, there's so much, and well, we can't keep going because uh, yeah. <laughs> have that much time. <laughs> yeah, but we had, there's so much stuff to talk about, and just I wish we could have gotten more. And we maybe we'll get to it when it comes out on Blu-ray and stuff. Yeah, maybe. But um, if you enjoyed it, you can listen to past and future episodes as well. You can go to pony411.libsyn.com. Spelled again: L-I-B-S-Y-N. You could also, of course, go to iTunes and search for Pony411 and subscribe there or rate and review as well. There's Stitcher.com and search for Pony411. And, of course, there's the iOS and Android apps of Stitcher. There's Google Play, play.google.com slash music. Remember, you have to go specifically there and search for Pony411. And there's YouTube.com slash Pony411. You could subscribe there and like and comment. Hey, what do you know? Of course, Ponyville Live. You can go there. It's the same as YouTube, but yeah, it's another thing. You can also check out radio stations and other podcasts. And, of course, Ponyville FM, which is one of those radio stations. You can t- check us out every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, other you know DJs and other and music and whatnot as well on that station. I suggest you checking that stuff out, too. Of course, there's our social media and contacts and whatnot. Email. Pony411podcast at gmail.com. Tell us questions, comments, criticisms. What'd you think about this episode? What'd you think about the movie? All that stuff. You know, that's a pretty big thing. Did you even go to see the movie or too scared to see the movie? Oh no. How full was your theater? How empty was it? You know, that sort of thing. Yep. But I don't know. We want to know. Tell us. What was your experience? There were people were there were there loud people? Were people generally well and behaved? Where you will behaved. <laughs> Where you will behaved. Yes, all that stuff. You can ch- tell us via email, or you could go do go to facebook.com slash pony one like the page, and again, tell us about the movie and whatnot, if you want. And that's also where uh, new episodes will show up as they, you know, are released. If, it's, if we've been doing this for 200 episodes, I mean, come on, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's Twitter. We're at pony one That's where the usual episodes usually show up. That's where we talk about stuff and whatnot. It's short and sweet. We still don't have 280 characters, but hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. Of course, there's our personal Twitters. I'm at Nemesis Prime One, and he's at Alcatraz with a 77T and an underscore at the end. I have 280 characters on my personal account, oddly enough. We have also, you know, more toys and stuff, and I've been doing things. Doing things that yep. you can't talk about. No, I cannot talk about legally. Lawyers will kill me. <laughs> they probably won't kill you. They'll kill me legally. <laughs> It'll be a legal death. murder. <laughs> legal murder. <sighs> but yeah, um, you can follow us on those accounts, of course. That's it for 200. It's Woo. in the bag. It's 200 episodes. So I guess on to the next 100. Woohoo! <laughs> Starting with, of course, 201, which will be Secrets and Pies. Secrets and Pies. Yep. We'll be talking about that. I already talked about the comic. Dash and Pinky. Oh boy. And that's you. Yeah, I get a dash episode. Pinky dash. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, until then, of course, for the 200th time, please pony responsibly, guys. See ya. Goodbye. Goodbye.